Paul, cosmologists tell us that there's dark matter in our universe, mm -hmm. uh, maybe four or five times as much as all the matter, stars, galaxies, planets that we, that we see. How can this be? How, how can we have dark matter? Well, um, the, we've discovered that it's there. <laughs> it wasn't something that we expected to be there. Uh, we naturally thought that what we see is everything that there is. But as we've studied the universe over the last century, the evidence has built up that the majority of the matter in the universe actually is dark and visible and different from um, the matter that makes up you and me. So when we all learned in school that everything is made of atoms, it's not true. <laughs> actually, that's a minority. Most of it is made of something uh, quite dark. Well, the naive question is, if you can see it, mm -hmm. how do you know it's there? Oh, well, good question. Uh, well, because it gravitates. Uh, and uh, what it has in common with ordinary matter is that if you make a lump of it, it draws itself together into lumps. And uh, it adds to the overall mass uh, uh, if it lumps around ordinary matter. So, for example, the way we first discovered that dark matter exists is that we looked at distant clusters of galaxies. And we looked at the rate at which they move around one another. And if we use the same laws of physics that describe the way the planets move around mm -hmm. one another, we found there was something terribly wrong with what we observed. They were moving around much too rapidly, given the amount of mass we could see there in stars and galaxies. And the more rapid things move, the more mass there has to be to generate that. And to hold them and to hold them together. together. Otherwise, they, they go flying apart. apart. So right. we knew they'd been around for billions of years, but yet they seem to be moving at these rapid speeds. So already we get, already one could estimate that the majority of the mass of that thing we were looking at, that cluster of galaxies, isn't visible at some kind of dark matter. Now, the same data, I think, it came with individual stars in, in individual galaxies that they were rotating so rapidly that they would seem to want to have enough speed that they could escape from the galaxy because if, if, if the mass was only what we saw in the galaxy, the speed was too large it would run away, but right. it was still rotating. That's right, exactly right, Robert. So in, instead, in particular, instead of uh, what normally happens, let's say, in the planets, is that the further out you go, the slower yeah, the yeah. planets move. Right. Uh, here we were finding the further out we go in our galaxies, the speed remains the same. And instead of flying off like you might have expected, it seems to remain in orbit. So we, again, one could do a completely separate estimate of how much of the matter was missing. And again, it was similar to the sorts of numbers we got from the first. And the calculation seems to be four or five times as much as everything we see. That means all the stars and planets all put together? That's right. So we are the minority. So the, stu the stuff of, of, of ordinary matter, the visible matter, is the minority. The majority is the dark matter. So this dark matter we know uh, uh, can, can uh, clump together by its own gravity, and we, we know that that gravity affects the matter that we see and the matter that we are. Right. But there's no other, the traditional ways that matter interacts electromagnetically in other ways that dark matter does not interact with our visible matter in the same way. Well, we don't know, and that's one of the questions that is a, one of the hot um, areas of exploration mm -hmm. at the moment. Uh, one of the, they're, they're, you know, since all we know about is that it gravitates and how much it is, you can imagine theorists can dream up many different ideas for what this stuff may be, and they have. But the idea that is the simplest and best motivated from the point of view of particle physicists is that these particles actually do interact through a, 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 the weak force, the weak nuclear force, the same force that uh, involves neutrinos and ele uh, electrons and, and the like and involved in the processes of beta decay that we see in nuclei, and it's also involved, uh, occurs in processes that, that occur at the center of the sun, nuclear processes. So this is one of the four basic forces of a, a le electricity, magnetism, the weak force, and the so-called strong force. Exactly. Nuclear. So this is just one of those four. Plus gravity. Plus so, gravity, right, that's which right. is this that's right. thing. Right. That's right. Okay. So, so and if that's true, um, uh, I should say, so the reason why it would make it different from the other weak particles we know is it's a lot more massive. So harder to produce, more slow moving. So even though we're moving through a sea of it, because it's interacting through a weak force and because it's so massive, it wouldn't have much effect unless you had a very sensitive detector. 
but we can detect weak particles if we can't not do know how to develop detectors to do that. And so the big race that's under it's, it's occurring in, throughout the world right now is to build detectors of ever increasing size and ever greater sensitivity uh, to look for the dark matter uh, that is simply passing through us all the time as the Earth moves around the sun and the sun moves through the galaxy. So let's just lay out a kind of a structure, a taxonomy of the different things that dark matter possibly could be. Yes. Okay. So um, the example we first gave, which are uh, these weakly interacting massive particles, uh, they're also called wimps for <laughs> short, even though they're not very wimpy, they carry actually quite a wallop. Um, that is um, the particle physicist's favorite idea. Uh, partially because it's testable, mm -hmm. and partially because they, it's easy to dream up examples of such particles. Um, at, the, and, uh, at the other extreme would be particles that, only, that we can only interact with gravitationally. So um, they may interact strongly with themselves, but in terms of our detectors, the only effect can be gravitational. And this is also a very possible idea. So, for example, uh, one of the ideas that's prevalent right now in, in our understanding of fundamental physics is the idea of extra dimensions. Mm. And that our world may be a surface that's embedded in a space with, extra, with an extra dimension that we can't detect or move into. And sitting a short distance away might be another similar world uh, we can't go out there. We can't. We, we're not allowed. Our particles can't reach into the fourth dimension, this fourth spatial dimension. But it's there, a short distance away. You say short distance away. It's a short distance away in the fourth dimension of space, not exactly. in our dimension. Yes. Right. Yeah. And it could be microscopic. We right. could be talking about a trillionth the size of a nucleus, or, or even smaller. Uh, it's a short distance away. But because we don't have the capability to move in that extra dimension. Well, in some sense, you'd say it's infinitely far away, but not sure. quite. If there are particles over there that are clumping, we can feel their gravity. That gravity would reach across the space between these two worlds, and we would, it would feel, from our perspective, almost the same as if it were on our side, except we couldn't touch, feel, or see it. It would be the darkest of dark matter. Wow. So, so the, the, that's the other extreme, that, that there really is this dark matter that's four or five times more than the gravitational effect of, of our matter, but, right. the, but it really doesn't exist in our, right. our three-dimensional world. It's, 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 it's part of a over. dark world. It's part of a, a, wow. a dark world, and, we're, and, we're only, and, we're, and curiously, we can actually detect the presence of that dark world because of the nature of gravity, because mm -hmm. gravity goes wherever space is. It can stretch over space, whether it's separated in this extra dimension or within our dimension. So now, it's a fascinating now, idea. Cosmologists have rejected what would seem to be the simplest explanation that there are black holes or dark planets or you know brown stars that never ignited so you can't see them and all this stuff is around and yes. you know would be there because there's just not enough of that. Is that right? Yeah. So I mean, they, that's where they look first. You know, as it, as it, we often des uh, describe, it, we always look under the lamp post first. <laughs> so the first thing is to look for ordinary matter, yeah. like black holes. We know those exist, but we've studied that and we've discovered no, no, there can't exist enough black holes. We're pretty sure we, there don't exist enough black holes that could account for the dark matter. Another example are neutrinos. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't for a while know what the mass of neutrinos were, and they are weakly interacting particles, but very light ones. But we had the idea that maybe there's, you know... So many. So many, yeah, you could produce many of them. And when we pushed that idea, we discovered, no, that wouldn't give the universe the right structure with the light distribution of galaxies, and now we've actually been able to measure... We're coming close to measuring the mass, or we have some strong constraints on the mass, and... No, it, it's there. So, so actually, it's a form of dark matter, but it's not the dark matter. It's not the dominant dark matter. We're still missing the, the, uh, the true candidate. The big piece. The big piece. And the wimps are, are sort of the next thing under the lamppost, the next <laughs> easiest thing to detect. So we're working our way through the list, essentially according to what is easiest to detect directly. Do you think there's a real possibility that dark matter can be in the fourth spatial dimension? I think it's a, yeah. I think it's I think it is a logical possibility. I mean, if you follow the logic that led you to the idea that there could be a fourth dimension, I mean, so this is not coming from cosmology. This is coming from attempts to try to construct a, a unified theory of the four forces, including gravity, and make them consistent with relativity and quantum physics. 
One of the interesting ideas that's been around since the 1920s, but which has really been building over the last few decades, is that it all fits together very neatly if you have this extra dimension. Mm. That in fact, some of the forces are really excit excitations of the extra dimension that to us feel like the weak force or the electromagnetic mm. force. And this idea is very powerful in explaining a lot of the symmetries and properties of particles and forces. So to the extent to which that idea continues to um, be successful, um, there's no reason why in that picture uh, our world uh, should have matter and the other world should not. Why should we be the only one that's populated? Uh, so to me, it's quite, this idea is quite natural, although unfortunately it's the hardest one to test. But in either event, dark matter becomes an enormously powerful probe of what the structure of reality is. Yes, yeah, because it helped shape, because it dominated the universe over uh, its first nine, most of its first nine billion years and helped shape the structure uh, by forming the seeds from which structure formed. It's extremely important to our history. Uh, it's also extremely important to identify it because whether it's wimps or it's matter in extra dimensions or something else, you know, on, on the list of possibilities, it's giving us a hint about new physics, new phenomena, maybe new forces. Um, uh, so it's important both for our understanding of fundamental physics and for the history of the cosmos.